Well, what do we have right here? Flowers from the garden. Flowers from the garden. We have Baneri giant, zinnias, peach sunflowers. Also, garlic. Garlic. And who would have thought garlic? That was a garlic scape that opened a up. A garlic scape yeah. that opened up. Yep. Isn't that gorgeous? It is gorgeous. Yep. It is flower time. Flower time. Yep. Flower time. So we always encourage everybody to incorporate flowers into your vegetable garden. Mm -hmm. Welcome everyone to the Road by Road Garden Show, the best dead gum gardening show ever on the radio and the internet. How about <laughs> that? Glad to have you this evening. Oh man, we got a good show for you. It's we're in the middle of harvest season. I say the middle of <clears throat> right, beginning. Right, right. It Greg's birthday week. Ah. Oh. We gotta sing oh. Happy Birthday. <sighs> Happy birthday. <laughs> How old are you, Greg? I am, uh, I'm uh, 57. 57? 57. We asked some viewers that on live the night, and he got his feelings hurt. They thought yeah, he was in, 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 in his 60s. In his 60s. Oh, yeah. Red, Red velvet, velvet, your Thank favorite. You. you can save yeah. it for later. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and peel it back just a little bit. If I, in case I get caught up, I can partake a little bit. You can partake, yeah. yeah. Anyway, we're in the middle of the beginning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. of our harvest season and it's exciting because we got all these things coming along we, we're digging potatoes you've already dug your potatoes i dug my potatoes and these are from my root pouch which you've kind of foo-fooed on my root pouches i didn't foo-foo uh, on your root pouch i just have never done potatoes in a root pouch okay so i did what kind are these german butter ball german butter balls in a hundred gallon root pouch and i weighed these this is exactly nine pounds now i could have let them get a little bit bigger but well, I, was, I think that they're i think they're perfect harvest size. i was kind of impatient the german butter ball is if you're going to grow one in a container this is it right here this is a roasted potato and that's that's the size of shiki right there yeah that's good nine pounds i think I can look back at the video, but I think I planted six potatoes. I cut them in half, so mm -hmm. I would have had 12 halves. halves, nine pounds in a root pouch. Yep. And that is just so exciting. Yep. And then the good thing about it is just as soon as you dug them, you turn around and flip the pouch. I flip the pouch, yeah. And you got tomatoes growing in it. Mm -hmm. No, 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 not in that one. Oh, you don't? Okay. No. The one I flipped is garlic look at this garlic elephant garlic mm, smell that Spongy. we need smell of vision so in the fort now the potatoes was in the you said 100 gallon. 100 gallon yep. the garlic I did in the 45 so I had probably about 15 um now I just pulled this yesterday so it looks like one big bulb but once it dries, this top layer will become translucent and you will see the individual buffs. We've had people call and say, I pull my garlic, it looks like one big bulb. Yeah. And it will until it dries and then you'll see the individual bulbs. That was huge. That was huge. So these were in a root pouch. Uh -huh. So if you don't have a big garden space, just patio, back porch, I encourage you use those root pouches. And the good thing about it is, as we mentioned earlier, the succession planting you can do yeah. is quick and easy. Right, so I pulled the garlic up yesterday and within 30 minutes, I had some, uh, what do you call it? Tomatoes? Yeah, the... Well, it was a new variety that uh, one of the seed companies had sent us to trial. That was a dwarf tomato. Mm -hmm. dwarf. I grew them in the greenhouse and donated them to your root pouch garden. Yeah, you did. So, we also got zucchini. Mm -hmm. You want to talk about zucchini? Well, it's that time of year for us when squash is coming in. And this also is a variety, a new variety we've grown this year. This was a variety sent to us by the 
the same seed company for us to trial, and they've turned out pretty damn good. Very disease resistant and very prolific. They got kind of a weird color to them though. But anyway, with squash, we find ourselves every year. We have this thing what we love when squash comes in, and we fix them fried, we fix them stewed, we fix them every way possible, and then they say, no, we kind of burn out on squash, yeah. and we play, still got plenty of squash. So, our neighbor found this recipe on TikTok. It's called Zoodles. Don't knock the talk. Don't knock the talk. Don't knock the talk. And she fixed a Fix them for Sunday night. Have you taste them there? Yep, so they were delicious. Now this is your own recipe right Yeah, here. I might have added a little to it. Mm. That's good. So basically, you take the zucchini and there's all different kinds of devices out there. This happens to be a pampered shelf. You know, I love my pampered shelf. And you just um, slice it there. Now watch your fingers. Well, on this one, you don't have to wash your fingers as much. Um, but you want to go all the way down. Avoid the seeds. Really? Yeah. You don't want to get the seeds there. But look there. So you got zoodles. Mm -hmm. Isn't that cool? It is cool. Now that is good. But you may have got it just a tad on the spices. I though. did a little spices on there, <laughs> which I love. But I tell you, I think this would be wonderful with some Alfredo sauce right here. Yeah. But you could use this zucchini to in, in the place of pasta. Yeah. So you could add some chicken and some Alfredo sauce, and voila. So all I did for that was I added some uh, olive oil. Mm -hmm and onion and garlic. And it might be that red onion in there that's a little spicy. Mm -hmm. and some and some, well, some Italian seasoning too. Mm. Um, and just about... Did you put some cheese in there? Yeah, some Parmesan cheese. About three minutes there on low and... Boom. What a meal. Great. Is that good? Mm-hmm. Oh, just a minute. I just think the actual <clears throat> noodles with some um, ranch would be awesome. You could eat that in a salad. Uh, yeah. A little vinegar and yeah. olive oil would be awesome. Another way to enjoy those squash. Mm -hmm. And we have a bunch of squash. A bunch of squash. Yep. So for tonight's show, we're going to be talking about what you should be doing now. So we're in the middle of this thing. We kind of always get tied up and we... We sometimes don't understand what we need to be doing next. So we're going to go through zone by zone and talk about what you should be doing. Just kind of remind you or jog your memory of what you should be doing to keep you growing your food. We have plenty to preserve and also you have plenty of fresh to become in. Mm. But first thing, we've got a couple new things we've got to talk about. Okay. We have uh, a new drip tape fitting that we should have brought on a long time ago, and I don't know why I didn't, but that we just didn't, but we do now. And this goes from mainline to drip tape. So for anybody who wants to raise beds or anything like that, where they're running their mainline tubing, you can simply go from mainline to tubing with, excuse me, from mainline to tape with one fit in there, and you don't have to worry about the barbs. So if you just run the one straight tape, just way to go. Okay. Anyway, we got those. Excuse me, we got those on the side. We still have tall multiplying onions. Uh, yeah. And we're going to carry these tall multiplying onions till the end Probably of May. Probably about the end of May, yeah. So get your orders in, end of May. They're going to be off the website. It'll be too late to plant them. We'll offer them again in the fall. And we'll offer them in the fall. Yep. So, yeah. Uh, we got another seed that we eat that's kind of new, but I'm going to save it, talk about it later. And I'm really excited about it. So. What are you doing in your garden now? I mean, you've dug your potatoes. Mm -hmm. Okay, you're harvesting some squash. I harvest my garlic. Mm -hmm. We're still eating. You're still harvesting English peas, Mr. Yeah, Big Yeah, Mr. Big P. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're winding down with our leafy vegetables. Our broccoli and things like that are kind of winding down a little bit. I still have some lettuce growing. 
we're kind of winding down on that. And we're in that stage now where we're starting to harvest some things. And then within the next two weeks, we're going to be harvesting a lot. So we need to be thinking about succession or keeping things going. So let's talk about zone nine first. Okay. They're a little below us. A little below us. And you guys in zone nine are probably about two weeks ahead of us. So you're probably gathering your corn. If you're not, you're out there at it, your sweet corn. Your okra and your southern peas and your sweet potatoes probably should have been already harvested. If you was running late, you may be closer to us. Sweet potatoes? No, Irish potatoes. Irish potatoes. I, as I call them, just taters. Taters. Just taters. Tomatoes, the, they're probably got... They're close. If they're not harvested they're now, middle floor... tomato sandwiches. Oh, man. Oh, man. You've been fantasizing about those, uh -huh. Middle Florida, uh, South Florida, I know y'all guys have got them. Middle Florida is probably coming in. North Florida may be another week or so before y'all's come in. You're at that stage now where you really need to take care of some disease and pest problems. If you do some scouting, make sure that you're keeping those plants sprayed and treated so that you can extend your harvest. Tomatoes especially. Sometimes if we let the insects and bugs get away from us, the harvest interval will go down a lot, so you can prolong all that by doing some mm. doing some treatments, maybe some organic treatments. Nothing really harsh, but if you get into a situation where you got to knock something down like stink bugs, then you can use something like bug buster too. The point of the thing is keep an eye on your insects and disease at this point. Now it appears that we're going to have a dry season for us. Dry seasons, normally speaking, we get better harvest. We don't have as much disease pressure and we do a better job of harvesting simply because we use the drip mm -hmm. irrigation. So it allows us to manage things better. So I'm assuming if the weather pattern keeps on like this, it it's going to be a good harvest time for us. Now you guys is on uh, want to make sure that you manage your pollinators. And I'm a big believer in keeping something out there for the bees. And that being said, I'm going to talk about this new seed that we have that we just brought on. It's called Super Bee Facilia. Now we've had a Facilia before, but we've never had this Super Bee Facilia. Was just a different variety. Super Bee. Super Bee, one word. Super Bee Facilia. Yep. S U P E B E E. Super Bee Facilia. Okay. I have planted this before. We've been out of it for probably a year, year and a half. We just got some more in because we got a new supplier. Man, I was reading up on this, and I, I'm, I am planting some this weekend. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, I got some sunflowers planted on 36 inch rows. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go back inside those middles there and plant the super bee facilia in the middle. That way, when my sunflowers are through, I got the facilia coming along behind it. They, there's probably not a better cover crop you can plant out there for honeybees than this facilia is. It lasts anywhere from six to eight weeks on bloom time, which is a huge amount of bloom time there for your bees. And it is packed, let's see if I can read right here. It hit the nectar content on this is especially high and it has high protein levels, which leads to a lot of honey production. Oh. So it keeps your bees nice and busy and healthy. And you get honey. And you get honey off of them. Mm. And uh, a lot of a lot of other Beneficials are drawn to it as well. It's just like a big haven for pollinators. It has a blue flower on it, blueish purple flower on it, and a taste of dry weather as good as any cover crop does, and it loves the heat. So it's one of those things we can fit in in our summertime rotation. It's going to work wonderful for our bees. I'm excited about it. So in zone nine, they need to be planting, they need this, to be planting now. this Especially if they got things coming off and they don't want their soil to sit idle. They need to put something like this in there to keep that soil working. Also for the pollinators, but also for the soil. This is another interesting fact about this super bee bacilla. I must love that word. I know I'm going to mess it up, but I hadn't yet. <laughs> Initial research has shown that it will scavenge up to 30% of your nitrogen and calcium in your soils and wow. save for the following plant, which is huge important because we normally don't have anything that's going to scavenge nitrogen to save. We've got legumes, mm -hmm. but this is not a legume. It's going to scavenge that, uh, did I say sulfur? I meant calcium. Calcium and nitrogen and keep that for the following plant. So what would you plant behind it? 
mean, you could do a fall. If you, this would be an ideal thing to do if you're doing a fall crop of tomatoes, this would be a wonderful mm. initial cover crop for a fall crop of tomatoes. So we're talking, still talking zone nine. Still talking zone nine. My point is, the guys in zone nine that are coming off from these crops, your corn's coming off, your mm -hmm. squash is coming off. If you're not doing a succession plant, even if you are, you don't need to plant them in the same spot. This is a wonderful thing to plant there, follow up for a cover crop. The two I recommend right now is buckwheat and this placilla. Mm -hmm. Now the buckwheat, I honestly think it's got it beat on weed, weed suppression. I think the buckwheat, hands down, has got everything beat because it grows so quick. It will outgrow pigweed. So if weed suppression and pollinators are your big thing, then go with buckwheat. If your big thing is not weed suppression, but it's for pollinators and scavenging nutrients, I would go with this Super V to see you. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I think right. that's... The other thing Zone 9 could be doing is plant those heat-loving favorites. Oh, they could be successful. Okra. Plant. Okra, uh, Roselle. Southern Pea. Uh, I would hold off on the Southern Pea till, uh, on, till fall crop. What about sweet potatoes? Sweet potatoes. Sweet potatoes. Well, any of those heat-loving crops... Uh, they need to be watching their tomatoes for those... Uh, what do you call it? Stink blossom bug. in rot. Well, yeah, you should have already had your calcium mm -hmm. on there for that. Yeah, uh, you should be watching for stink bugs for sure on those tomatoes. It seems to be later on in the stage of tomato stink bugs jump in there and can damage you for that. Your corn worms in zone nine. Uh, it's probably there at the end. They should be harvesting. That's going to be more of a zone eight thing, I think. Okay. Uh, if you still, if you have a late patch of corn, you definitely need to be treating it with corn earworm. But if you Corn is coming off. I wouldn't worry about it at this point. Okay. All right. Uh, succession plant of okra. They can do succession plant of okra as well, because mm -hmm. okra will go off real some long. Zone eight, which where we're at. That would be us. That would be us scouting. Uh, we always have a problem. We have a lot of people call in. One of the most troublesome insects out there are vine borers and squash bugs. So scouting. Scouting means you go out there and look at your crops and see if you can see what, visualize what insect pressure that you're having. One thing you can do if you've got squash is look to the underside of the leaves there, and we're going to show you a picture here of what it looks like. But these copper colored eggs right here is squash bug eggs. So you want to destroy them where you mash them, squish them, or rake them off or whatever. You want to do that, but I can get Mash them. Mash them. Mash them. One more there. Yep, southern thing. Get rid of them. Destroy those eggs, but I can promise you, if you see them, then you're going to have more than what you can destroy. They're going to be something that gets away from you. That's the reason it's important to stay under some kind of uh, insecticide program. Most of the time... A lot of these real mild ones, such as, oh, see if I can get back here. Oh, you getting old there, ain't I'm you? I'm getting old. <laughs> Bug Buster Oak, which is a pyrethrum. Some of those milder ones work perfect early on in the process of killing squash bugs. So there you go. Scout, if you see any pressure whatsoever, or if you've had a history of them, go ahead and get applying something like that right there. Sweet potatoes. So for us in zone eight, by the middle of that May is the time to plant sweet potatoes. I'm planting a variety called Covington this year. Um, again, managing pollinators. So I will have I got I will have some plots coming off within the next two weeks of maturity. Tom onions. I got two plots of tom onions we're digging and putting mm -hmm. up. I will turn around and put that into a cover crop. Potatoes. Potatoes coming off this week. I'm harvesting potatoes this week. You've already harvested yours. We'll have that plot to do something with. There again, it's a good thing to put in flowers or cover crops there. Um, tomatoes, make sure you keep them trellised up. Sometimes they can get away from them, especially those indeterminate varieties. Uh, my determinate ones, I'm on the fourth stringing of those. I got determinate. Y'all don't know how tall I am, but I'm 6'3", but I got determinate tomatoes up to here on me. Mm. That's when I stand up. I so stand, above honey high. Above honey high, I have got below tomatoes. the shoulder. So keep mm -hmm. see, keep some trellis and material on hand because you're gonna have to stay up. And, and those indeterminates that you have are either gonna grow more so than that. So you got to keep keep after. About every three or four days, I'm out there doing something with the amount of matters as far as trellising. Mm -hmm. um, stay on top of the weeds. 
run the wheel hoe down through there. Every time you get a heavy rain or you see any weeds coming up, go ahead and bust that up and stay on top of it. Uh, succession planting with okra is what we can do here. Now this is what we did on okra. So in the early spring, we grew our plants at the greenhouse and we transplanted them. Mm -hmm. But I think a great strategy is, is four weeks after you transplant the okra in the ground, go ahead and direct seed, direct seed. you another crop in another spot. And that way you can have okra coming on all year long because what's going to happen is nematodes are going to get to feasting mm -hmm. on that first crop pretty hard. And when they do, you just move on. Do that throughout the summer. You have okra till fall. And for us in zone eight, our corn is tasseling. Corn's tasseling. We're going to be through that and probably but two and a half weeks. Stay on top of those corn worms. Stay on top of those corn worms. Now, this year for me, I've not seen any damage on my leaves. Well, last year I did. So I've not sprayed mine yet, but mine is silken. So I'll probably go ahead and get me an insurance policy or two on there to spray on top. And I will use spinosad, which is garden insect spray. And if I see any damage, then I'll switch over to Bug Buster 2, which is a little stronger product to knock those out. Squash bugs. Squash bugs, same thing. So make sure you scout, stay on top of those. Aphids. Aphids is one of those. We had somebody the other night on the live mentioned about spraying seven on aphids, and I kind of went off there. Okay. Aphids, if you've got a severe problem with aphids, just about anything will kill them. Don't stress out about it. It's one of the milder insecticides with good contact will pop them out of the way. A lot of times they're crashing on their own, but those will take care of those. Mm -hmm. Don't use nothing harsh like seven on aphids. It's a waste of time, money, and uh, uh, seven's rough on our pollinators as well. Uh, Cow peas. Let's talk about cow peas because a lot of people plant cow peas right now or fixing to. And they will do okay as a spring plant, but I tell you what we're going to do. And I've done quite a bit of talking with people over the years and come to the conclusion we do a lot better job planting our cow peas in the fall. Mm -hmm. So we're going to hold off till August to plant our zippers. And we're going to plant a big crop of zippers for fall harvest. We get a better crop. And believe it or not, the insect pressure is less on the fall of the year with the southern cow. What do you call it? Capir uh, 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 I had a brain freeze, brain bubble there. It's that me. age thing going it's on. It's that age thing going on. Southern pea cucurio is a lot less damaging in the fall than it is in the springtime. And that's the reason we're going to plant ours in the springtime. And I would highly recommend anybody that's planting peas to try a fall crop. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised at your yield and how much better they do in the fall than they do in the springtime. All right. Zone seven. Zone seven. Moving on down. Zone seven. You guys are in the middle of your plant right now. Your last frost date was around April 15th. So you should be dead heat in the plant. Probably have some of you have your corn already up. Uh, all should things, have your transplants in. Yeah. You should be going wide open. Take time to evaluate and make sure that what you're going to preserve this year is in your plan of what you got planted. Mm -hmm. So if you want to put up a lot of tomatoes, make sure you get a lot of tomatoes planted. Corn, same thing. Whatever you need. For us, different years, it's different things. We need to put more up. Mm -hmm. so. Make sure those potatoes, there should be still healing those. Mm -hmm. Yep. So they probably are going to be another month off from uh, harvesting their ash potatoes. Mm -hmm. Any of those leafy greens? harvest those because they're fixing the bolt. Yep, the heat will work on those pretty good. So keep those under tab there and transition more into spring crops. Get your plot ready for your sweet potatoes mm -hmm. when the soil gets warm enough. Yeah, uh, a lot of people plant them in May. I think the end of May, 1st of June would be perfect for, for zone, zone 7. seven. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Start monitoring for those pests and fertilization schedule. Mm -hmm. One thing that I've I've uh, noticed this year, I've done a little bit of job, better job fertilizing my tomatoes and my watermelons. Mm -hmm. I did a pretty good job last year. We had so much rain last year, it washed a lot of my fertilizer out. And I haven't had that much this year. My fertilizer seems to be doing a better job. This is probably the first time I can remember in 10 years I have not battled early blight in my tomatoes. Knock on wood. Knock on wood. I think it's for two reasons. I rotated to a place where there's probably not been tomatoes growing in 10 years. And I've stayed under a pretty strict spray program with liquid cop. So therefore, as of right now, I don't have any, or I haven't had any early flight, which is good for me, because it's something I battle. Tomatoes are looking wonderful. 
little tip, folks, what I do is I have one day a week, it's my spray day, like Sunday. Sunday's my spray day, Sunday afternoon. I just know every Sunday afternoon I just have to spray everything. It, it makes it simple. Just have mm -hmm. your one spray day on a seven day rotation. Mm -hmm. Go out there and hit with the fungicide and then set the side. Uh, ooh, we're on zone seven. Yeah, next is Zone 6. Zone 6, and that's where our daughter lives, so we get a little feedback from you guys in Zone 6. We also have some good friends up at Adams Greenhouse, Greenhouse. up in Ohio that keeps us informed. I seen on their Facebook page the other day, they grow plants and sell. They had all these plants out there for sale. They're in the middle of their their season right now. They're, they're getting ready to put it in the ground. Uh, they say, you know how they is, they say Mother's Day you shouldn't plant anything anytime till Mother's Day, and then Mother's Day go all in. All in. So you guys are in the first part of going all in, get everything planted. To get that soil amended, if you have transplants, get them in the ground. Yep. Um, evaluate what you need, what you're going to be wanting to eat, and if you want to preserve anything, now's the time to evaluate that and make sure that you prepare for growing more of something if you don't want to preserve it. Right. Get your preservation supplies. Yeah, when you talked about that, mm -hmm. so how is canvas supplies this year? Um, I looked today. I was at Dollar General, Walmart. Um, they seem to be plenty on shelves. Now I've been uh, gathering some jars for my grandmother. She had extra. Your uh, cousin I stayed with last week. She had extra. So I've been blessed with people wanting to give me jars, which is what great. about bands? Bands, I've seen them in stores. I I don't think there's gonna be a shortage of those. Not yet. Mm -hmm. But um I tended to uh hoard them up a little bit last year. Yeah. yeah. When there was a shortage, so yeah. I'm okay this year. Yeah. So you guys up in zone six, I mean y'all can still enjoy those leafy vegetables for pretty much to midsummer. And one thing that our daughter does with her garden that I think is really interesting, she has three, or they, they have, we got a son-in-law too. They got <laughs> three small children mm -hmm. and they got a garden. They got a small yard, but they got a pretty decent sized garden here in the backyard. Mm -hmm. They pretty much turn their whole backyard into, into a, garden. a garden. Yeah. To bring those children into gardening, they incorporate a lot of flowers in the garden because you know, Sometimes children can't get really excited about a zucchini, <laughs> but they get really excited about sunflowers yeah. and things like that. Now, so Ari is seven, yep. just turned seven. Which is our oldest. And she loves pink, anything pink. So we gave her some pink zinnias mm -hmm. when they were down recently, and she's got those planted, or she's on planting those. Now, and one who is, oh, let me get this right. Five. Five. He loves sunflowers, so she lets him plant sunflowers all along in there. Yep. So what it does is it draws her attention and their involvement into the garden and gets them involved in it, and she can maybe sneak a few vegetables yeah. in, into their eating habits as well. There, But the flower thing, I never really thought about that. The flower thing really draws the kids into it uh, to enjoy the gardening part of it. Yeah, they love to come here and go through the seed room oh, yeah. and pick out flowers. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So there you are, uh, zone six. You guys get to enjoy a lot of things throughout the summer because you can grow throughout the summertime. Your tomatoes will make it throughout the summer where July 4th hours pretty much washed yeah, up. Yeah, and, and the thing about zone six is they're a medium length growing season. Mm -hmm. So they're suited to both warm and cold weather plants. Cool, yep, yep. So they, they don't get too hot. Right. So the things, there's things they can plant and have all during the growing season, growing season where we get too hot and we yep. just can't grow we it just anymore. Can't do it. So they don't have to be as diligent about switching over to these flowers and cover crops. And then they, the cool season stuff, they can pretty much grow all summer, right? Yeah, pretty much. Well, they, yeah, pretty much. There's probably a little bit. They still have hot days. They just don't have near as many of them as mm -hmm. what we do. And uh, the nights seem to be a little mm -hmm. bit cooler. You know, it's a trade-off we make with you guys. We get to grow a lot longer season down here than you do. We got bugs down here y'all have never seen before. So Right. Yeah. So in the comments, let us know what you're growing, mm -hmm. what zone you're in, and what you're growing, what you're doing this time of the year. 
and especially the zones we didn't cover. Yeah, four or five. Yeah, yeah. Give us some updates. What's yeah, going let's know what you're doing because we're kind of out of touch and we have a big group here. Mm -hmm. Let everybody know what you can do in your zone and what you're doing right now, what you're harvesting, what you're preparing yep. to plant. Yep. Yep. And, and some so things that may do good in your area. All right. Your zone. All right, so we got the old goat drawn. If you've never uh, join us before we have the old goat hid somewhere on the set here and if you pick the old goat or you spot the old goat put it in the comments below and we do a drawing for the week after that for the show before and you send your if we draw your name send your address in to cussservithosstools.com and you get one of the coveted host merchandise all right you ready go okay. Oh, got two there. And winner, <laughs> Tom Matthews. Oh, Tom. Tom. Tom spotted the old goat. And uh, Tom, we probably got your address on file. Yes, Tom has been with us for a while. Yep, Tom. Thank you, Tom. We'll get you a a, uh, a gift out in the mail there. All right. Corny joke. Corny joke? I'm ready. Are you ready? I'm ready. Has to do with watermelons. Cool. Think about this now. Mm -hmm. I think you can get this one. You think I can get this one? What do you get when you slice a watermelon into four pieces? Come on. Quadrants? A quartermelon. A quartermelon. That's a little corny, but it's good. You know, speaking of the old good, I just thought about something. We got a fan in Alabama. Yeah. yeah. Who is she? She is from the Head Family Farms. Mm -hmm. And she watches our show religiously. And we got time to spend a little time with her a couple of weeks ago. And she told us how she loved to watch and pick out the old goat. Yeah. She watches for her mom and dad. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you all so much. I hope that some of this inspired you. Maybe you have some ideas of what you need to do. Get out there. Get off that couch. Cook some zucchini. Yep. Get dirty. Get dirty. <laughs>